this cover crop has been planted like a month ago, five weeks ago or so. And this is just one example of uh, a myriad of cover crops that we have uh, out there. So in, in this case, we have a mix of bell beans, bell beans that you can see here. And then we have peas, we have vetch. So we have two types of vetch. And then we have oats. And this cover crop, we have, we have selected it because it, uh, it can help with nitrogen fixation. So we have three legumes uh, in here, three, three legume species in here. And then we have a grass, which can help with the weed management. And adding the grass uh, makes sure that we, we can get like a better kind of uh, uh, cover of the ground here. And also the oats have allelopathic effects that can suppress certain weeds. Before getting uh, further deep in the specifics of this cover crop, uh, I wanted to talk about why would you choose a specific plant to be a cover crop. So it all depends on the purpose of the cover crop, what you want your cover crop to do for you as an organic farmer. So a cover crop can do, uh, in this case, we're using it like for nitrogen fixation, but also also for um, weed management so you can you can go with nitrogen fixation so the middle the more legumes you have in the cover crop mix the more nitrogen fixation you get uh, from that especially if you are ensuring that your your crop is having the right conditions in terms of rhizobia in terms of soil moisture also in terms of temperatures and uh, the suitability of your plant of, of your crop to the area where you are so we have weed management as a prime purpose with cover crops. Also, some people use it like to, to control soil erosion, especially in the winter time, if they don't have any other crops planned or if they don't have any other cover for the uh, like residue cover, for example, for the soil. So weed management is one. And then we have uh, nitrogen fixation is, is another thing. Protect, protecting from soil erosion is another purpose. And then we have also other things like providing a better soil structure, uh, especially if we go with grass cover crops uh, that have fibrous root systems, so they'll, uh, they'll result in better soil aggregates and better water infiltration into the ground and, and so forth. And then some cover crops can also help with compaction, like alleviating some compaction, especially crops with a taproot system, uh, things like uh, on the east coast and in the northeast they use uh, tillage radish is, is one example that can be used for that and then legumes in general can help with this buckwheat is another example that can help a little bit with cracking the uh, hard uh, hard pan in the soil so lots of different purposes uh, from cover crops uh, so in our situation here we're trying to get the maximum ground cover uh, so we rely on the cover crop for some nitrogen here we have 85% uh, legumes in this cover crop mix and 15% oats. So the oats are gonna give us some allelopathic effect and the legumes are gonna provide us with uh, some nitrogen. So here we went with uh, around 120, 125 uh, pounds to the acre uh, of uh, planting rate. And this is, uh, I think it's given us a good stand in the situation. So we, I talked about some weeds growing here. This happens because we do have a high um, seed bank, uh, weed seed bank here in the soil. So, um, so some weeds like Malva right here that is growing in this cover crop mix. It's, uh, it has a taproot system and it's really hard to control in organic systems. So what we tried to do here is we went with a couple of pre-irrigations, but we, again, because we, we have so much uh, high uh, weed seed bank here, uh, then the malva still, still comes up. And malva seeds can stay in the soil for many, many years. So in this case, what we're gonna be doing here is before this cover crop reaches uh, maturity, and, uh, and I can see on some of the bell beans, the flowers are coming, so this means maybe my cover crop is getting ready to be either mowed down or disked in the ground. And this, this operation will mean that we're getting rid of the weeds as well before they go to seed. So uh, important to keep in mind, you know, like when you decide what cover crop to do, 
and uh, decide to go with the cover crop is how you're going to be uh, terminating the cover crop and when you're going to be termin terminating the cover crop. And for legumes, uh, in general, we get the maximum nitrogen maybe output from legumes if we harvest them towards maybe kind of a half flowering or so. And then this is when they have the highest uh, amount, total amount of nitrogen. So at that point, I think they'll, they'll be having 3 to 3.5 uh, percent nitrogen in their tissues and then putting back that, that biomass in the ground will mean that that nitrogen will mineralize and will come back to, the, uh, to your following crop. So here we have uh, three or four different legume species. We have vetch that, is, uh, that grows like a vine and it has these compound leaves here, uh, like pinnately compound leaves. And uh, this helps uh, get a nice cover of the ground. And then we have bell beans here. It has kind of a square stem and uh, it grows really fast. So it helps with the nitrogen fixation uh, quite a little bit. Uh, and then we have the other legume that we have here is peas. It's also kind of viney and uh, helps also uh, get a nice cover and smother the weeds. Uh, on top of that we have the oats here that helps with uh, allelopathic effects, meaning that it can suppress uh, weeds with uh, some of the exudates that it releases in the ground. So here we have a bell bean plant that I just uprooted from the ground and uh, so you can see the very characteristic square stem here and uh, the other thing that we can see here is the amount of nodules that we have on the bean on the root system so we have lots of nodules here and they're still growing so they're not really kind of uh, as big as uh, their final size but they're still growing and the more nodules the better nitrogen fixation so nodules is where the rhizobia live and you want to have bigger nodules and lots of nodules in, on the root system. If you want to really have nodules on the root system, then this means there's something wrong with your, either with your seeds, so uh, they didn't come with rhizobia, or your soil doesn't have the rhizobia that is needed uh, for the, uh, to inoculate the, the root system and to start fixing nitrogen. So usually you can get uh, the seed and rope with rhizobia, and this is a cheap insurance that you will get nitrogen fixation going as soon as you have the plant uh, starting to grow. Uh, so this could be, um, like the absence of rhizobia could be one of the reasons why, why we don't have enough nitrogen fixation or enough nodules. The other reason could be that the soil conditions are not right in terms of maybe dry soil or too wet soil because rhizobia like it when it's aerobic. They don't like uh, flooded soils, for example. One of the drawbacks with uh, legume, annual legumes used, uh, used as cover crops is that the seed price could be, could be hefty. And uh, the main reason for this, I'll take this plant here. So the main reason for this is basically the size of the seed. And we'll, we'll see the size of like the actual seed. So here, this is the seed of this grown plant. But we'll see seeds in, in the bag in a minute. And when, when you're buying this seed at the grocery store, and faba beans does sell at the grocery store, so it is a crop that is used for, uh, for food as well, and for feed, and for cover crops. So there's competition, and there's a lot of demand for this crop. And uh, the food market just increases uh, the price of, the, of this, this kind of cover crop. So legumes usually, uh, their uh, annual legumes, they're pricier than, than grasses and they're also uh, more expensive than perennial legumes. But in this situation, we're restricted uh, to annual legumes for our cover crops because we want it out of the way in like maybe two months or so. Uh, so we have to use annual legumes because they just grow faster than perennial, perennial uh, legumes. So here for the seed of this mix that we're using here, we're looking at almost like 90 to a dollar, 90 cents to a dollar a pound. So this is, this is a little expensive and 
This is mostly because of the cost of, uh, of the bell beans and the peas in the mix. And another benefit, another benefit from having legume, legumes in the cover crop here is that they attract beneficial insects. As we can see here, we have some ladybugs uh, attracted to, this, uh, to these uh, bean plants. And uh, actually when, when we have uh, these, these plants flowering, legumes in general, when they flower, then they'll attract even more uh, beneficial insects that, like ladybugs. And ladybugs do feed on aphids. So for here, this is one of the uh, strategies that we use to control aphids is to attract more beneficial insects. We can, we can do this with uh, legume cover crops, but we can also grow specific plants that will do that, like sweet alyssum, uh, cilantro, dill, uh, some, some of those plants that will flower uh, for a long period of time, and then that would offer uh, an alternate source of food uh, for the ladybugs. Uh, especially uh, uh, when they're not uh, when they're not feeding on on aphids. So one other benefit that we also get from uh, especially deep-rooted cover crops is that they can recycle nutrients from deeper uh, layers in the ground and pull those nutrients, put them up in the uh, in the root zone. Also, some cover crops like buckwheat, for example, can uh, recycle phosphorus and make it available. Uh, for the following crop. So here we have an example of the, of the uh, cover crop mix that we're using here uh, on this farm. And this is really popular in this area of the central coast. Uh, so here we have bell beans. And you see how like the big kind of sized uh, seed here. So it, this, this helps with kind of a, a fast initial growth of the plant, of the legume and then also helps with uh, nodule formation uh, and stuff but also this comes at an expense this is why l legume seeds uh, used for annual cover crops are expensive and then we have purple vetch here then we have peas and this is this is oat seeds here so another example that we also have another example is buckwheat and this is the seed of buckwheat and it's not a grass, although the uh, name must suggest it's a grass, but it has nothing to do with grasses except for the high starch content in its seed. So the buckwheat seed is really kind of funny shaped. It's kind of, it has uh, some sort of a pyramid shape, except that it's kind of roundish. It's more like a diamond shape type of thing. And uh, buckwheat is, uh, it's a good crop because also it attracts beneficial insects and uh, recycles nutrients in the ground and helps with it has some allelopathic effects also against weeds and uh, and it's really kind of uh, doesn't take that long uh, to grow.